morning from Jerusalem. Shabbat Shalom. Streets are empty for Shabbat. Well, it's early. 6.25 in the morning. And we're looking out over a sleepy Jerusalem on a Shabbat morning. Taxi driver maybe bringing somebody from the airport. But now the most practical way is to go by the trains. Very fast train, very reasonably priced, very easily accessible. Somebody out for their sport this morning. They're walking security people, people out because they like to, people out because they are obliged to. A bus driver, maybe a bus full of people <clears throat> leaving for the airport or whatever. So here we are in Jerusalem coming today for a filming with on the Via Dolorosa and the Holy Sepulchre requested by a TV company interesting say a prayer for that today <clears throat> that it will be blessed Got provocative readings today. Well, a synthesis in Thessalonia in uh, Colossians' letter of the extraordinary transformation that has happened to those first disciples. They have gone from hatred and division to a community of love, reconciled. And that reconciliation hangs around events that happen right here in the Holy Sepulchre, which is right under that big dome. And then you see another dome with the big illuminated cross over the Greek part of the church and just to the right of that behind the big dome is Calvary. And this is the Lutheran church. It's very interesting archaeologically under the Lutheran church in times of raging debates in the late 1800s about where the real place of the crucifixion was and Cal and the tomb. There's a was an emerging theory that it was located at the garden tomb, which is developed under the auspices or with the support of the Anglican Church. There you have the Ecole Biblique, as in Stephen's church and the Ecole Biblique beside it. And then just a little bit south of there, you have the Schmidt Schule and the garden tomb. And so a big dispute arose and arguments were employed. Isn't that beautiful to hear the bells over Jerusalem? I hope you can hear them at this distance. We don't have the bells mic'd up. bells toll and rejoice and mark time for us. These bells are ringing here at Our Saviour's Church, the Franciscans, the custody of the Holy Land.
and then right below is the tower of the Lutheran Church of the Savior the Redeemer sorry this the Franciscan is called the Savior the Church of the Savior and the Church of the Redeemer two different words for a very uh, closely seen uh, re same reality so now that the bells have gone we can speak more calmly so the, in, under the Lutheran Church, when that was being built, there were major excavations. You can find them on the, the website of, um, of the Redeemer Church. It's called Erlöser in German, E-R-L-O-E-S-E-R. -E -E so the, well, I think if you put down the German Lutheran Church as well, and probably there's a, the texts I saw yesterday were in English uh, about the archaeology there and it was very interesting they were able to discern the periods uh, of the quarry that was there which also matches the findings inside the holy sepulcher by kenyon the famous uh, lady archaeologist and then the um, different strata of loam over the expired quarry that quarry was used to build jerusalem from uh, maybe even the 8th century before Christ up to the time of Herod but Herod's building projects were so big he needed huge quarries and in fact in the development of Jerusalem even since I came a number of those quarries have been discovered and they hauled the stone in to build the temple they're huge rocks they're bigger than buses uh, that are in place and it's still a bit of a mystery how they brought them in uh, just using uh, very rudimentary mechanics and they were able to uh, transport the huge blocks of stone and put them in place in the temple mount. Herod was an extraordinarily ambitious builder and this temple turned out to be the most beautiful temple in the Roman Empire at its heyday. And so then the quarry where the Holy Sepulchre was and which had been outside the walls of the city and had supplied the stone for the old city of Jerusalem back then and after the exile and before the exile probably, um, then it was obsolete and all that exploited area then was covered over with earth and became a garden area. And so the rock face served as tombs, and there are still first century tombs there, even inside the Holy Sepulchre. One is called the Tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, in memory of his great deed and the burial of Jesus. So those are just some more notes about the archeology span there. So the academic consensus then has firmly uh, concluded that the traditional site identified for various reasons because of the temples that of Venus and of Jupiter that Hadrian put up here uh, about the year 135 and the second Jewish revolt destroyed the whole city and rebuilt a city um, brought it further up here to the north actually over to uh, basically where those trees are let me show you there's a big wall over there uh, yeah, the, the trees that are under the camera there, well, let's see, no, the ones, the ones here in the center there, the trees we see, the closest trees to us in front of St. Stephen's Church, which is the, dominates the center of the screen there. And so the city extended north, and it was no longer called Jerusalem, it was called Aelia Capitolina. The Aelia was the family of, of um, Hadrian and then capital like constantinople the city of constant uh, polis constantinopolis and so here we have uh, the holy sepulcher now inside the city with all that development but it's also interesting i read some notes yesterday about this that there were no dwelling places in there uh, in those centuries even though it was incorporated into the city which meant that it was an area of cult of of worship of of prayer which then hadrian had transformed into uh, 
uh, uh, temple to Jupiter and to Venus. And that's also a very interesting subject we won't go into now. Uh, so there we have, um, with those little reflections, just a further rational um, place and time, the laws of the incarnation. God becomes man, comes into our place and time for our redemption. That's the faith we have. This is all prepared from Abraham on. And a breakthrough into a promised land forever of redemption. A promised land that we attain through the resurrection. The land of the living. Marvelous thoughts and themes. And here we are in Jerusalem sharing this with you. So let's go to the beautiful text we have here in Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you once were alienated and hostile in mind. Imagine all the alienation there is today and all the hostility, even among couples who are many years married, among siblings, sometimes lots of hostility, and among neighbors. People are hostile inside themselves, can't deal with themselves. They want one thing and do a different thing. Paul even talks about that. He says, what a miserable wretch I am. I want to do the good and I, I do the evil. Hostility inside of us, people who do harm to themselves, foolish behaviors, foolish eating, foolish use of substances, disrespectful behavior towards others that do damage to oneself also. And all this interior hostility inside the person, inside the family, inside society. You once were alienated and hostile in mind. There are people that are always complaining, always angry, always bitter, hostile in mind. Hostile against this institution, hostile against that institution, hostile against this neighbor, hostile against this manager, hostile against this team leader, against this coach, against this television station, against this politician, against hostile. You once were alienated and hostile, but God has now reconciled you. And the words here are very, very concrete, they're very incarnational. In the fleshly body of Christ, through his death, here at Calvary, just here now to the left of the tower. Let me just focus in there again. So let's say right behind the top of the big dome there, behind the, right behind that flag, in that direction, just behind the big dome is Calvary. In the fleshly body of Christ, martyred body, through his death, to present you holy without blemish and irreproachable, firmly grounded, stable and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. And of this I, Paul, am a minister. And we also understand that all of the baptized are prophets, priests and kings. We are ministers of the good news of redemption. Here in Jerusalem to ponder that, this fulcrum of mystery of redemption, this geographical fulcrum, this historical fulcrum. It's the great value of pilgrimage. Coming to a place to be, to, to kind of to touch, to feel, to see, to hear, to notice, to observe the concrete people that were here to enter into their minds on all sides of the divides. The struggles we human beings have as we grow. But hopefully the sun is rising in our minds and we are being transformed from hostility to reconciliation, from alienation to our true identity, to our true fulfillment and happiness. We have a beautiful Psalm 54, God himself is my help. 
and how powerfully we can proclaim that here in Jerusalem. God himself is my help. Behold, I will provide the lamb of sacrifice. Behold, I will provide it. Take your hand off that boy, Abraham. And then the good news in the garden. And the path along there is not easy. Just like in the gospel, we have an argument about the criticism of the disciples eating ears of corn on the Sabbath. And sometimes we can be invaded by legalistic attitudes. And hampered or even blind to more important things. The dignity of the human being. The slow path to recognizing human dignity, human freedom. The slow path to recognize the one true God that humanity is still struggling with. The love of our Creator, our Redeemer. Let's leave it like that, people. We have a beautiful day. So a nice little selfie moment here from uh, Dam here. So here we are. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Say a prayer today for the movie, for the filming, that the Holy Spirit will give us the right words for this great TV producer. Tell you more later. God bless you.